So what you can expect when you come into the office then for the day of the removal of the restorations, regardless of the materials that are being used, the, the process goes like this. You're, you're met in the office and you're brought back to the treatment room, you get situated into a chair, and then one of the first things that we do is re I review to make sure that what we have planned for today is what you think we're having planned for today, and then we decide are we either on the same page or why is there a change. Now, some of the things that we add or have available for you, for your not only for your comfort but your health and well-being, are a technology that we call Milcom. The Milcom is a wonderful set of type of a process that you can have. It uses um, electrical stimulation to help balance the hemispheres of your brain. It uses uh, musical tones, wonderful music that will, will balance the hemispheres of your brain. We have a couple of nutraceuticals which help raise your neurotransmitter level to give you a great mood and well-being during the process. So the people that we use this uh, on have all, all, all loved this process. It gives them a high degree of calmness, well-being during the whole process. For me, from my standpoint, a person is in a very calm, smooth, zen-like state and they're just, they're completely present with us, but they're completely calm at the same time. So one of the things that we're offering also in the office is ozone. Ozone is a marvelous disinfectant and it's not just the, what's considered or people think about the industrial, waste products that you hear about in the atmosphere that gives so much smog and pollution. It's not that type at all. Now, the kind of ozone that we're using in our practice is medical grade ozone. It's used by uh, integrative physicians around the world and in some countries actually it's the number one preferred choice of treatment for many many types of chronic diseases. So you might ask what are we using it for? One of the things that we're using it for is disinfecting teeth after we take out the mercury fillings or other kind of fillings or we clean out the decay, we have the option now of giving people a very, very powerful disinfectant that we can then, once the tooth is open and exposed, we just take a very gentle uh, dispensing of ozone gas uh, right onto the exposed tooth surface prior to putting the filling material back into the tooth. This gives a very nice, clean, guaranteed, bacterial-free surface so that you're not going to have something that's going on with underneath the tooth that we can't see, and it really gives a nice um, freshness to the tooth. And as a precaution for your well-being and health during the amalgam removal process, another additional uh, step that we employ is fitting you with an, a small little nasal hood and flooding you with pure oxygen during the course of the amalgam removal process itself. So if it's a short visit or a longer visit, you'll have the, the nasal hood on and breathing the oxygen into your system so that you have a, a positive flow of a, a way to keep the mercury vapor from coming around your nose during the process. The next thing we do is we begin the process of the anesthetic. The anesthetic typically is used, it's a local anesthetic, my favorite anesthetic to use is a non-vasoconstrictive anesthetic, meaning it doesn't have epinephrine. And that's one of the things many people have a problem with when they get an injection from a dentist. It makes their heart flutter. And it goes really fast and is very uncomfortable and unsettling. And we don't use that kind of anesthetic. There's no need to. I can usually get in and do what I have to do well before the anesthetic is wearing off. Uh, so we don't need to have the, the um, vasoactive material. Once the anesthetic's been administered, we begin the next steps of the process. You are then given a, we call a chelating rinse. It's a material that is a liquid that we ask you to swish around and for about 30 seconds or so, and then you spit that out. What that does, it, chel it, it covers all the soft tissues in your teeth and your mouth with the material that is known to be able to complex or grab up mercury. Once we have that step accomplished, the next step ensues, which is the placement of a rubber dam. Rubber dam is a, a comes in different shapes and sizes, but basically it's a, it's a think of it as a raincoat for teeth. We have a, ours is a, a circular piece that fits between your teeth and your lips and has this cute little way of going into your mouth and we have holes that are punched into this, so all we have now are your, we put your teeth 
with the holes, so all we have are your, your, the tops of your teeth are sticking out from the fabric of the rubber dam. So what this allows us to do is prevent almost 100%, it's not quite 100%, but almost 100% any of the splatter and debris that's going to be coming out of the tooth fill, from the tooth filling material to go through your mouth, into your mouth, and it's blocked by this rubber dam material. So once the rubber dam goes on, then we, the next step is that we, I, we slather, the, there's another chelating agent that we slather, looks like hand cream, over the surface of the rubber dam. This is uh, what we give another protection, it's a barrier to chelate or complex up with the mercury. It's another barrier to help protect you for your, um, for your health. Once that's in place, the next thing that we bring in is a HEPA vacuum. This is a, a machine that sounds when it's on like a jet engine and it has a very large long tube trunk that we bring down in, right in front of your face. There's a large vacuum so any particles that are starting to come off and extraneous vacuum, things that can be vacuumed up, go down this long tube into the, into the HEPA filter. Behind me then, another for our well-being in the room is that we have a negative ion generator that is sending out uh, negative ions that again now complex with the vapors that are in the air and goes down to a collecting plate that's at the foot of the chair. What my assistant and I do for ourselves then, we have these large uh, OSHA approved mercury vapor masks which we look like we're from hazmat. Uh, the only thing we don't have on is the whole suit, but we have this big mask on with eye protection. So we have a high level of security for our, our well-being and protection as well as your well-being and protection. So then once all the pieces of the puzzle are put into place, then the process of the removal of the mercury fillings begin. My assistant and I are, are suitably covered. We have the uh, drill is starting to go, the hand piece, and it's very carefully used to remove the filling. So, one of the, so what do we do? If the filling is large enough, we want to quarter the filling or take it out in chunks so that we're not pulverizing the whole mass and having it just disintegrate and being let loose into the air. So we'll section it, trying to get it out in as much chunk as possible and have the big chunk go down and not have it being released into the environment. So that's one thing. If it's a smaller filling, I use a much smaller burr to go around the side and the periphery of the tooth to then just help and hope we can remove the whole piece of the filling. But the goal is that we get out all the filling. I can, how can I assure that for you? That's a very common question. I use a magnifying glasses that are 3.8 power. So when I'm looking at a tooth, it's almost the size of a fist and I can see very clearly and plainly into your tooth that whether or not I'm leaving anything, if all the decay is out of the tooth, all the mercury filling is out of the tooth, and that the tooth is then being prepared for the filling that's going to be placed. Once all the mercury filling is out of the, out of the teeth, the next steps are very important is that I, I remove the rubber dam that may have some particles that are, that's doing its job, it's got particles of the filling material on it. I envelop that and I change my gloves and I contain all that in one mass then for its disposal. Once that is completed, you're rinsed out of the mouth with our high speed vacuum and our water spray. Then you're given a second dose of the chelating rinse to again swish and not swallow but swish and then spit back out into a, a cup so that we're giving you enough uh, secondary tertiary chance of having all mercury that was around the operative site to be completely removed from your body. So during that process, all that's going on, uh, you have um, also now at this point an opportunity for a bio break if you need it. So given that you might not have that, then we're ready to go and then to do the next step. The next step then is the placement of the new filling material into the tube. The filling material, whatever it is, if it's the composite, most of them are direct composite fillings or crowns or whatever that we're using for the teeth. At this time is when they're placed into the tooth. We then check the bite and do all the normal things that one does when, has, when they have a filling.